Hello everyone. This is a quick little video on setting up a spreadsheet. Now I'm using Google Sheets because then I can share it with everybody in my group. And actually I'm going to start off by thanking Mary Cruz and Larissa for letting me borrow their sheet to show you how they've laid it out. And then I'm going to show you a slightly different format. So they have their sheet laid out with each of the items all in one spreadsheet. Their seating, their tables, their miscellaneous and renovations. And you'll notice they're differentiating these different categories via color. So they have the type, the item name, and each of the items has a link to the, I, some site on the web, and then a description of that item. And this really lets me get a good flavor for what it is that you're going to be doing in your room. Then they have the price, the amount, and a subtotal. One of the things you want to do with prices, and it's it, you can leave it like this, it's fine, but I'm going to click on column D and go to format, and under number, select currency. And that just turns this into a dollar amount. And you'll notice Google does something interesting. If I switch column D, it knows that column F is based on column D, and it switches the format over here. If I didn't want to do that, I'd have to go back and switch the format back. Now, when I click in this cell, I'll notice that it has a formula and spreadsheets work on columns and rows. So this formula is asking Excel to take the amount in D3 and multiply it by E3. I can just easily type this back in. So to enter this formula, I can just simply type equals D3 times E3, and then I'll hit return, and there's my amount. Now, I also could have done this by typing the equal sign, clicking on the cell that I want, use an asterisk to multiply, and then the next cell that I want, and press return. So here I have the sheet where I figured out that formula in the first cell. I'm now going to click on this little box on the right-hand side and pull this down. And as I do that, you'll notice that it fills in the formula, and it does kind of an automatic update. So this is D3 times E3. This is D4 times E4, five, six, and you get the idea. The only issue you have to be concerned with is it also does the formatting. So if I drag this all the way down to the end here, it fills them all in, but now I've got to go back and change the colors on my formatting. You might want to do this filling in the formulas before you put the colors in, or just go back and it's fairly easy to come back up, select the cells, do the fill colors, and put them back the way they were. So I'll do that real quick. So my fills are back in. This being able to drag a formula is a very nice function once you've got it in. You can also copy and paste it. So if you have the formula here and I copy and paste, you notice that number doesn't change. But when I pasted it, it updated it to being D11 times E11. Now I'll scroll down here and get to my subtotal. And I notice I might need to make that column a little bit larger when I put that dollar sign on. To figure out the grand total, I'm going to go ahead and delete that formula. There are a number of functions that are available to you. One of them is sum. When I click the sum button, it gives me this box with equal sum parentheses, and you can't see it real well, but it's waiting for one cell, and then it's got a couple of dots and waiting for the other. So the easiest thing for me to do to sum all of my figures is to go back up to the top and just drag this down. And you'll see as I do this, it's filling in those numbers. But make sure you don't include the cell with the sum itself, otherwise it'll give you an error. So I'll go ahead and hit return, and there's my grand total. So again, the way that Mara Cruz and Larissa have their spreadsheet laid out is perfectly fine. But I'd like to show you another way to think about this. So here's a spreadsheet that has five separate sheets in it. So what I did is I took Mara Cruz and Larissa's budget and split it out into the various items. 
unless your budget gets really, really complex and it's scrolling pages upon pages upon pages, as I said, it's fine to leave it in the format that they had it. But this way I can go in and look at my totals for my various different sub items to see how I'm balanced out. And I have a master budget here. So how did I do this? Well, to create a sheet, you just click the add button. And it will add it. I can drag it if I wanted it to be at the end or if I clicked on renovate. I can go in, rename it. And I, now I have my spreadsheet. So I put in my numbers, such as seating. Do my sum. Now when I've got my individual sheets together, I've got to transfer the sum or the subtotals to the master sheet. So I'm gonna copy this cell, go over to my master, and I have some issues. I'm gonna paste it in this column so you can see what happens. For some reason, if I just try to click paste, it gives me this reference error. So it turns out there's a paste special. Now, if I use paste values only, it will put the amount in. My problem is if I go back to my seating spreadsheet and I decide I want two of the Zinus classic chairs, press return, it updates the total here, but you'll notice it does not update the total here. Although it did here. So what did I do? Well, it would be nice if paste special formula worked. But for some reason, I also get a reference for that, and I could not figure out a way around it. So what I had to do was to go back in and type in the reference explicitly myself. So if I click on cell C2, you'll notice that it says it equals seating, the name of the sheet, an exclamation mark, and E10. If I go back and look at seating, I'll see that E10 is where the total is. So I had to go back in and type that for each one of these. And be careful because it's case sensitive. So I've got that, and now I can go into my spreadsheet and make whatever changes to the amounts I want. So the last thing I have to be careful about is, let's say I want to go ahead and add another item. So I'm gonna right click and insert a row below. A new item. It's $1,000, and I want three of them. I can come over and type my formula in or drag this square down, and I'll get my new amount. But notice my total didn't change. So I've got to come back up and update this to be E10 because I have a new row. Now, fortunately, the master sheet is smart enough to know that I added an extra row so it updated seating from E10 to E11. So just be careful if you're adding new items to make sure that you check the subtotal to make sure that it's updated as well. So those are the two formats for the different types of sheets. Now, one last item, no matter what format you do for your sheets. For the renovations, they want to put in a window and I went and just found one at Home Depot that's 31 by 29 inches. So we want to purchase this window and install it. The window will be purchased through the district and installed by district facilities management. I'm gonna make a cost estimate that this is gonna be about $1,500. If you're not sure what a good cost estimate might be on an item, just direct message me and I'll be happy to give you a number. So that's it for the sheets. And remember, you can do it in any format you want. The things I'll be looking for, though, is that prices are in dollars. It's just, for some reason, a little bit easier for me to read. And then you have a total of some type, say either a subtotal here, or it could be down at the end of the sheet. That's it. If you have any questions, make sure that you direct message me.